It was one of the first nuclear power plants in the former Eastern Bloc. Now it's being demolished slowly. Let's take a look at a unique technical facility, full of solutions and ideas that cannot be seen anywhere else. I'm driving through the vast forests northwest of Berlin. There is a nature reserve here, but also a unique piece of engineering, and one might say the only Soviet experimental nuclear power plant built outside the Soviet Union. This is the model of nuclear equipment in the information center. Using of nuclear power in the Eastern Bloc started at the world's first nuclear power plant, at Obninsk near Moscow. The plant there had a capacity of only 5 megawatts, woefully inadequate for three reactors. But at Obninsk, different technologies were tried and their advantages sought. And so Unit 3 there developed into the Vivir pressurized water reactors that we have here, and Unit 1 into the infamous RBMK reactor after Chernobyl explosion in 1986. The first version of the VVR reactor is Type 210. Only two have been built in the world. One between 1957 and 1964 in the Soviet Union, and the other right here, between 1960 and 1966. At that time, and another experimental nuclear power plant was being built in Czechoslovakia. It was unique in its use of natural uranium. In East Germany, they decided not to develop their own project and to use Russian technology. The East German plant took six years to build and lasted almost 24 years. In Czechoslovakia, it took 12 years to build. The plant was closed after only five years of operation and after two accidents. By the way, East Germany was proud of this power plant and had it depicted on a 10-mark note. We're entering a controlled zone. The first thing I can see is the former engine room. I say former because a significant part of its equipment has already been dismantled. The power station was shut down on FERS June 1990 and could be described as a victim of German reunification. However, that is not the main reason. In 1990, the plant was already at the end of its planned lifetime. And if it had not been for German reunification, it would have reached the end of its service life a few months later. Visiting the control room is the most interesting part of the visit. In Rheinsberg, there are not only one, but several such rooms. Before I explain why, here's a surprise. Even though it's been more than 30 years since the plant was finally shut down, the main unit control room is still on shift. It may seem like nonsense, but there's a reason. The decommissioned plant needs electricity to carry out its decommissioning, so it is not electricity generation that is now being managed here, but electricity consumption. And we go to the next control room. Elsewhere in the world, there is one control room per reactor, so here there are several. At the experimental plant, the different technologies were controlled from different places. Unification came with the VVER-440 reactor. This control room, I understand, was used to control the circulators and water management in the plant. The Rheinsberg plant did not have the dominant feature of cooling towers. It is situated on a narrow site between two lakes. And while it drew water from one lake, it discharged heated water into the other. This is the block control room that controlled the air handling and radiation control. Another unique feature is the greatly reduced power output of the plant. 
The VVER-210 reactor is named after its power output. While the VVER-210 reactor in the Soviet Union had a power of 210 megawatts at Rheinsberg, it was only 70 megawatts. No one here can explain to me why. And this is the fourth control room. This control room was used to operate the loading machine. It's the smallest of the four and the only one with a view of the reactor room. That is, if you consider a small submarine window a view. Here I must admit that separate control of the loading machine is not exceptional in the countries of the former Eastern Bloc. Even more modern nuclear power plants have separate fuel changeover controls. The reactor is no longer at Rheinsberg. It left the plant in the autumn of 2007. It may sound surprising that a used reactor could have been transported, but the truth is that a spent reactor is not very radioactive. We can see that for ourselves. Now we are 120 kilometers further north at the site of the former Greifswald nuclear power plant on the Baltic Sea coast. East Germany's second nuclear power plant has also fallen victim to reunification. Of the eight VVER Ford 40 reactors, two were abandoned before completion. One was completed but never started up and one shut down after only three weeks of operation. The other four were shut down soon after German reunification. It was here to Greifswald the nuclear reactor was moved. All retired East German reactors are waiting to be finally cut up and put underground in this hall. As you can see, I was allowed to make video next to them. I'm just not supposed to stand by them for long. The Greifswald nuclear power plant made history during the New Year's cold snap of 1978 and 1979. Within 24 hours, temperatures dropped by 30 degrees Celsius. East Germany was then on the verge of a blackout as coal froze on the cars and the thermal power stations had to be shut down. A torrent of snow blocked the roads. Lighting poles were cut down in the car park and shifts were transported to the power station by helicopter. But back to Rheinsberg, at the end of this exclusive visit, I must point out, not only is the nuclear power plant gradually disappearing, but also a unique technical facility. Isn't that a bit of a shame? That's something to think about. A significant part of the unit's plant will eventually end up in a technical museum. <laughs>